Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of SD Locks SCP Readings. This is Shaggy Dreadlocks. Today we're going to be reading SCP-2467 A Sum Greater Than Its Parts Item Number SCP-2467 Object Class Ketter Special Containment Procedures Foundation satellites are to constantly track the movement of SCP-2467, with analysts and programs predicting the movements of the object. Plants in the Meteorological Bureau are to divert traffic from areas likely to be visited by SCP-2467. In addition, the SCPS Sunderland, a fully armed Legend Class Cutter, will be dispatched to patrol areas where SCP-2467 is likely to come in contact with other vessels. SCPS Sunderland is to be equipped with a minimum of two rigid-bottomed motorized lifeboats to aid in the rescue of survivors of encounters with SCP-2467, along with high-impact naval weaponry to aid in discouraging the object from attacking civilian, merchant, or military vessels. Absolutely no aircraft is to be deployed in the area of SCP-2467's area of operation due to the severe weather phenomena associated with it. Where possible, waste dumped by SCP-2467 is to be collected by Foundation watercraft and taken to the nearest Foundation research site for study. A disinformation campaign is to be run following a boarding and or abduction event. Typical explanations to be provided to the public include user error, sinking via rough seas or rogue waves, mutiny, and pirate encounters. Amnestics are to be administered to any and all survivors and witnesses of SCP-2467 and its activities. Description SCP-2467 is a large ocean-going ship approximately 300 meters in length and 45 meters in width, bearing the nameplate DV Toluca. Research personnel have been unable to find any record of a ship matching the Toluca's description that has been registered to any port in the last 138 years. Of note is that components of SCP-2467 come from a wide variety of other sea craft including some such as the Flying Bridge dating back to at least the 1700s, along with various naval weapons which operate autonomously. It primarily travels in deep water and searches for other vessels in an effort to abduct crew and appropriate cargo before leaving the vessel adrift. Weather patterns in a 5 kilometer radius of SCP-2467 consistently display adverse and at times violent conditions, regardless of, and often in direct contrast to, the given ocean state at the time. Observation has shown near constant moderate rainstorms and thick fog in the area surrounding SCP-2467, accompanied by moderate to strong winds and slightly rough waters. In addition to the rain and fog, Winds have been known to reach speeds of over 125 km per hour, and waves reaching an average peak height of 25 meters when attempting to disable another ship. It should be noted that there are outliers, such as a 42 meter high wave recorded on February 20th, 1958, which coincides with the only known instance of SCP-2467 successfully bringing down a low-flying aircraft. Whirlpools of varying severity have been also spotted appearing in the bow wake of SCP-2467 on multiple occasions. SCP-2467 is operated by a maintenance crew, corresponding to approximately 75 individuals abducted from other vessels encountered by the object. Observance has shown that those on board SCP-2467 tend to adapt to the stress of their abduction and behave in a manner described as cheerful within a short time frame following abduction. This is believed to be a form of mind-affecting anomaly 
as shown by any person coming into contact or close proximity with SCP-2467 for an extended period of time. Within three to ten days, depending on the individual, they will come to believe that SCP-2467 is correct in its actions and will gain a strong desire or obsession towards aiding it however possible. Gradually, this causes a degenerative condition in the brain of the person to the point where the individual loses any semblance of independent thought at approximately four to five months after initial contact. Roughly every 40 days, SCP-2467 dumps a large amount of waste bundled into a net out of a rear port in the ship. Waste materials tend to be composed of damaged or worn ship components and tools, along with food scraps, empty bottles, clothing, scrap metal, fuel waste, and human cadavers. Addendum 2467-01 Following incident SCP-2467-12, Foundation personnel recovering waste materials deposited by SCP-2467 are to work in teams of six, with a minimum of two personnel to monitor the water for approaching sharks and other marine carnivores. Addendum 2467-02 Known vessels currently incorporated into SCP-2467. Note, various sections of SCP-2467 has not yet been matched to known watercraft. Given that a ghost ship is typically discovered once every two years, efforts are being made to determine just how many of these can be attributed to SCP-2467. Vessel the Toluca, a 16th century ship of the line, reported missing October 27th, 1745. The explanation of its disappearance was that it was commandeered and presumably sunk by pirates. The parts integrated into SCP-2467 include a flying bridge and 20 cannons. Cecil. The SV Seabird a merchant brig reported missing February 8th, 1750. Its crew was reported to be taken by pirates. The parts integrated into SCP-2467 include an anchor and various timbers. Vessel. HMX Hero, a 22-gun privateer brig, reported missing April 14th, 1806. The public explanation of its disappearance was that it was lost at sea. Seven cannons from this ship have been integrated into SCP-2467. Vessel. HMS Juno, a 26-gun frigate reported missing March 12, 1880. Its disappearance was recorded as being sunk by a rogue wave. The parts incorporated include three cannons and sails. Vessel. The SS Warta, a 150-meter steamship, reported missing July 26, 1909. Reportedly, it had been sunk in a storm. The parts integrated include two masts and the hull. Vessel. U-52, a German armed submarine, integrated on February 20, 1940, known to the public to be destroyed in a naval minefield. Incorporated sections include the hull and torpedoes. Vessel. Roma, an Italian battleship, integrated on September 20th, 1943, explained away as having been sunk in a naval battle. The parts integrated include hull sections, the bridge and structural components, and various guns. Vessel. The MS Munchen. A lash carrier, reported missing December 19th, 1978, and publicly recorded as being sunk by a rogue wave. The parts integrated into SCP-2467 include the hull sections and cranes. Vessel. The MV Derbyshire, an oil carrier, 
the date of its disappearance, was September 9, 1980, attributed to being sunk in a typhoon. The parts integrated include its hull. That's all. The SS Admiral Nakamov, an ocean liner integrated on February 20th, 1989. The explanation of its disappearance was that it collided with another vessel. The pieces integrated include its bow and funnels. Vessel. The FV Andrea Gale, a fishing vessel integrated on October 28, 1991. Its disappearance was attributed to being sunk in a hurricane. Integrated parts include its hull sections. Vessel. The USS Eldridge, a cannon-class destroyer integrated on November 11, 1999, publicly attributed to being sold for scrap. The parts integrated into SCP-2467 include hull sections, three Mark 22 50 caliber guns, two 40 mm Mark I AA guns, eight 20 mm Mark IV AA cannons, three 530 mm torpedo tubes. Vessel. The Kaz-2, a nine meter yacht, integrated on April 18th, 2007, publicly attributed to pilot error. SCP-2467 integrated the vehicle's glass Vessel. The Sacopus P-77, a guided missile destroyer, integrated on September 24, 2011, known to the public to have been decommissioned. Parts integrated into SCP-2467 include its 76mm gun, its 40mm gun, four MM-38 Exocet launchers, and its hull sections. Addendum 2467-03 Recent observation has shown a whole section identified as having originated on the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, which disappeared on Lake Superior on November 10th, 1975. Investigation into how SCP-2467 reached the Edmund Fitzgerald despite its location in an inland lake is ongoing. Addendum 2467-04 Clearance level 2467-3 Access Document In an effort to better understand SCP-2467, particularly effects and any noticeable events occurring on board the vessel, four D-Class personnel trained in sailing D-2467-1-4 hereafter referred to as D-1 through 4, were provided with a small 9-meter yacht launched from the SCPS Sunderland with the intention of them being boarded and abducted by SCP-2467 to observe the activities of the ship and its effects on those aboard. Each D-Class was fitted with a helmet-mounted waterproof video camera equipped with a flotation device and an external battery pack rendering it capable of recording uninterrupted for up to three months. Footage captured was streamed directly to the SCPS Sunderland's observational department as the ship trailed SCP-2467. Note, due to the length of this test, extraneous and inconsequential events and details have been redacted for brevity. On December 10th at 10.25 a.m., the SCPS Joyita is successfully launched from the Sunderland and proceeds north. Progress in this test continues without incident or notable activity for five days. On the 17th, both the SCPS Joyita and SCPS Sunderland make visual contact with SCP-2467 to the northwest. A strong westerly storm is manifested by SCP-2467. Waves of an average between 4.5 to 6 meters and wind speeds of approximately 55 kilometers per hour are recorded. Fog rolls in, reducing visibility to roughly 15 meters. SCP-2467 sounds its foghorn, and D-Class cameras show blue lights at the location of the vessel. D-4 deploys fenders. 
Several minutes pass as SCP-2467 approaches the SCP Estroita. Upon sight of SCP-2467's weaponry, D-1 turns the vessel 180 degrees and attempts to retreat from SCP-2467. The SCP Estroita is ordered to turn and approach SCP-2467. D-1 fails to comply. SCP-2467 then fires harpoons at SCP Estroita, fatally injuring D-2 and drawing the Droita to its hull. A boarding party consisting of five crew boards the Droita and attempts to abduct the surviving D-Class personnel, resulting in the termination of D-1, D-4, and one unidentified male from the boarding party. D-3 then boards SCP-2467, is handed a chisel by an unidentified crew member, and told to scrape rust from some panels under threat of physical violence. D-3 complies. 20 minutes later, the SCPS Sunderland successfully recovers the SCPS Druita with no parts aside from supplies taken by SCP-2467, leading Foundation personnel to believe that it had recently boarded and cannibalized parts from another, as yet unknown vessel. Note, as of the events of December 17th, all recorded events are entirely documented by D3's camera. On December 23rd, Video feed shows D3 is displaying signs of distress and pushing a trolley loaded with basic rations to crew members of SCP-2467. All crew with the exception of D3 are audibly humming an unidentified tune in unison. On December 30th, the video feed shows D3 still displaying signs of distress, hauling in a fishing net with three other crew members. An as of yet unheard voice, hereby referred to as SCP-2467-01, seeming to come from the flying bridge, orders crew member Worthington to be brought to the flying bridge. Four crew members apprehend a young male crew member and escort him to the flying bridge, which has the door open. It should be noted that this is only one of two times that this door has ever been seen to be opened. The door to the flying bridge closes after Worthington is deposited inside. Vocalizations of distress are produced from the flying bridge and are audible for the following seven days. Three weeks later, the video feed shows D3 swabbing the port side deck. She seems to be displaying lower levels of distress. A lighthouse comes into view, seemingly prompting SCP-2467 to adjust its course and head into more open waters. The following week, the video feed shows that D3 is still showing signs of distress, but is no longer requiring guidance by other crew in undertaking tasks on the ship. D3 is securing hatches on the deck when a crew member looks to the starboard bow, spotting a fishing ship identified as the Grendel. The entire crew, save for D3, gather on the deck equipped with grappling lines and ladders, as SCP-2467 is seen to produce a very large plume of what appears to be black smoke from one of its funnels. Smoke enters the cloud cover above, producing a meteorological reaction. Heavy rain, waves up to 7 meters in height, and wind reaching 70 kilometers per hour are recorded. The crew of the Grendel are seen to request assistance from SCP-2467. Both crews work together to secure the Grendel to SCP-2467, followed by the six crew members of the Grendel being coerced onto SCP-2467 under the pretense of weathering the storm. A short time later, a crew member belonging to SCP-2467 is seen to produce a diving knife and fatally assaults the captain of the Grendel. Remaining crew members are escorted down into a lower deck as D-3 and three other SCP-2467 crew descend a ladder onto the Grendel to salvage food, water, fuel, timbers, and a segment of the hull, requiring a cane to lift onto SCP-2467's deck. The following month, the video feed shows that D3 is showing minimal signs of distress, 
Laughing at an anecdote told by one of SCP-2467's crew as she sweeps the deck. D3 then hands her broom to another crew member and approaches a captive crew member of the Grendel and addresses them as they work. Leading to a brief dialogue wherein D3 warns her of the dangers of the ship and asserting that the song sung by SCP-2467's crew is dangerous and mind-affecting. Note. This captive was recovered by the SCPS Sunderland approximately 20 minutes later and held for examination for a period of six weeks before being administered amnestics and returned to their family. By the following week, the video feed shows that D3 no longer displays any sign of distress and now hums with the crew of SCP-2467. Three days later, SCP-2467-01 orders Smith and Chi to report to the refuse center. Video feed shows two heavily malnourished men, crew members known to be present prior to the abduction of D-3, enter a lower deck. They are no longer seen at any point on D-3's video feed or during observation by the SCPS Sunderland. The following week, SCP-2467-01 is heard ordering the crew to deliver D-3 to the flying bridge. Video feed confirms D-3 is once again displaying severe distress and attempting to exit SCP-2467 with haste. The crew of SCP-2467 show coordinated teamwork in D-3's capture, apprehending her minutes after SCP-2467-01 was heard. The crew escorts D3 to the flying bridge, with the video feed showing the door swinging open autonomously. The interior of the flying bridge is obscured by an intense blue-green light and seems to cause increasing amounts of static and tracking errors as D3 approaches the doorway. The video feed cuts out as D3 is thrown bodily into the doorway. Several months pass before the video feed resumes, showing total darkness until the camera abruptly emerges into a room, evidently out of a pipe. The camera's lens is stained with blood, and it falls on top of a pile of refuse to be dumped off SCP-2467. Contents of the refuse bin include scrap metal, empty oxygen tanks, broken tools, severed body parts, and a torn D-class jumpsuit which itself is stained with blood and other unidentified fluids. Sounds of distress echo down the pipe, consistent with D3's voice, albeit heavily distorted. Ten minutes later, a crew member enters the room and manually places waste products into a fishing net, ties said fishing net closed, and pushes the net and its contents into a port on the floor. A video feed shows the port lead to an opening in the stern of SCP-2467, and then the water. This net and camera were later recovered by the SCPS Sunderland. Closing Statement Following a review of the footage gathered and DNA testing of the human remains recovered from SCP-2467, it was discovered that the human remains contained within the waste did not belong to D3. Following this discovery, orders were given to collect any and all waste products dumped by SCP-2467 in an effort to determine how long it would take for D3 or her remains to be dumped. Tooth, hair, and isolated skin fragments determined to belong to D3 were recovered the following year. Research concluded that an as-of-yet unknown process had caused D3 to undergo a form of catabolism, breaking down tissue into a liquid state. Lack of other remains suggests that the resulting material was used for an unknown purpose on board SCP-2467. And that is it. Thank you all so much for watching, and do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, your neighbors, your parents, your dog. You can do me an extra solid and click that bell for notifications. That would be pretty righteous. 
Check down in the description where I have a link to this author's page so you can enjoy more of their work. I highly recommend their SCP-5007. Until next time.